from a Gaian point of view, uh, when we first started interfering with the atmosphere, nothing much happened. It was encompassing it by its ordinary regulating mechanism. But when it gets too much, Gaia can't cope with it. And this is why uh, I'm afraid, I think, it's going to play absolute mayhem with our civilization in the next 10 or 100 years. And when you see the whole picture, it, it, it is really fearsomely bad. I mean, things like the very rapid melting of the floating ice near the North Pole. As the floating ice melts, so less sunlight is reflected back to space by the dazzlingly white ice, and more and more sunlight's absorbed by the ocean. Just the melting of the floating ice in the Arctic Ocean will add as much heat to the Earth as all of the CO2 we put in the atmosphere to date. And this is why uh, I'm afraid, I think, there's very little we can do about it. All of our efforts to reduce emissions are as nothing. There is no morality about it. If the Earth improves as a result of our presence, then we will flourish. Uh, if, if it doesn't, uh, then we will die off. I fear that not many of us will survive, perhaps at best about a billion, possibly a lot less than that. Now, how they will die, it'll be by starvation, by war, by disease, who knows? The four horsemen really ride when conditions like that happen. It isn't an easy subject, is it? And people say to me, well, you can say that kind of thing easily because at your age uh, it, it's not going to affect you anyway. You'll be dead before it all happens. And that's true. Uh, although I'm not so sure that I, if I live to 100, I think a lot of things may happen before then. Uh, but I do have great-grandchildren, uh, and uh, it's progeny, uh, the name of the is the name of the game here. <laughs>